Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hatford Township Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Monday, June 8th. Mr. Berman, would you please call the roll? Mr. D'Amelio. Here. Mr. Oliva. Here. Mr. McCluskey. Here. Mr. Siegel. Here. Mr. Lewis. Here. Mr. Quinn. Here. Dr. Hart. Here. Mr. Holmes. Here. And Mr. Wexler. Here. If everyone would please stand and join the Pledge of Allegiance with our Chief of Police, John Viola. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. <laughs> Good evening. Yesterday we had a call well, a historic and very peaceful and uh, respectful protest in town. I'd like to I'd like to publicly thank Haverford High School students that were responsible that organized the event yesterday. Uh, they they organized the Black Lives Matters protest walk. We walked from and all nine commissioners joined them yesterday, as well as our chief of police, our township manager and many other township officials. But this thing was totally organized and led by students. So I'm proud to recognize Abia Numbazi, Trey Emeno, June Park, Marissa Tor, Tommy Barnes, Taylor Ferrara, and Lexi Ferrara. They're the seven, they're the students, the seven students that organized this. I talk, did talk to Dr. Rushi, the superintendent of schools, um, they're very proud of their students, their acti activism, um, their genuine concern for fellow man, and, uh, and race relationships, race relations in this township. So it's an admirable thing that this was led by our youth. It was peaceful. Uh, I'd like to thank our police department and our medical services team for all the support that they gave. Many compliments to our police department were given. So thank you, Chief, and thank you to the men and women of your department for their service yesterday. Um, it was nice to see the respect between all the participants, your police officers. And then I've had six or seven comments today about how nice it was when people fell down, they were dehydrated from the heat. That was so nice to have a police officer come to their aid and be so supportive and nice to them. So it was a, quite a difference than the rest of uh, the week that we've seen and some of the events that have gone on in the region and in our country. So. We're very proud of that, that I think that's a good representation of our township, an excellent representation of the youth that are following us into our news and our activism. So it was a great thing. So Mr. President. Yes, who was that? It's uh, uh, Commissioner Holmes. Uh, I just, if you would just add to your groups to call out, I wanted to uh, uh, say a special thank you to the African American Cultural Enrichment Club, uh, which, uh, uh, was uh, part of the organizers and their faculty advisor, Leon Smith. Right. So, all right. Does anybody else want to comment on, on the protest yeah. yesterday? I'll open it for any commissioner or any member of the police department. Mr. President, I just, um, I, I know some people will probably have comments later, but we, uh, I, I did want to just point out for the public's uh, benefit, I know there's been, the last couple of weeks um, have raised a, a lot of issues, both nationally and locally, um, in terms of everything that's been going on. And we obviously, as, as a township and as a board, with along with Chief Iola, released a statement last week. Um, we were all participated yesterday. And I know in speaking to the chief and the deputy chief, um, they are willing and engaging to try to set up uh, meetings that they can have with various groups that have reached out, individuals who have questions and concerns, obviously scheduling something like a town hall or something with the, with the current conditions and the virus is impossible. We're gonna work um, with the township and the police to, to try to meet if however possible with whatever groups uh, we can, because we wanna be open and transparent with uh, our residents and we wanna um, hear concerns and improve when we can get better. This board also has a police committee 
um, and Commissioner D'Amelio chairs that. Uh, I'm on that along with Commissioner Hart and Commissioner Quinn. And in the next couple of weeks, we are gonna meet with the chief and the deputy chief um, to go over issues that have come up nationally. And we wanna make sure that we're doing everything we can here in Hanford Township within our police department to, to follow best practices and uh, make sure that we're listening to concerns that may be, need to be addressed and how to properly uh, best, pop, best respond uh, to the residents that we serve. So um, we'll obviously report back in July uh, about that meeting with more information, but I, I just wanted um, all of our residents to know that the township is, is certainly uh, aware of everything that's been going on and we're trying to react accordingly. May Thank I, you. May I say something, uh, Mr. President? Sure. Um, and this would not be the first time that we met with <clears throat> any residents or any group. We have done that in the past and the chief and the deputy chief made themselves available in the past and um, they were very kind and, and very open. And it was a very, I thought it was a very good meeting, very productive meeting. Uh, I think Commissioner Hart, you were there, you would agree that uh, you know, when we left there, uh, we each had a mutual respect and uh, we promised that we would in fact meet again with any anyone uh, that wanted to meet. So uh, I view this as nothing but productive and, and something that should happen. Thank you. Okay, our next item of business tonight is the police department appointing an entry level police officer. This is our chair of the civil service. There she is. She could be unmuted, Joe. There we go. Um, as you know, we have one vacancy for entry level position in our police department. And, uh, and uh, the gentlemen, the candidates that I'm going to read off uh, have uh, been presented with conditional offers of employment pending the completion of the hiring process. Now, the list that I'm going to read from has already been approved by the board on December the 9th, 2019. So the three gentlemen that I'll be reading, I don't know, do you people have the list with you? Okay. If not, I'll just read them more. First one is Thomas Murtha. Second is Justin Davis. The third is Joseph. Adamski. Uh, Mr. Have, President. You can take your vote now. I'm sorry, I make a motion to accept the list. No, the list has already been Oh, we already accepted. did that. Okay. Uh, it was it, it, on December the 9th, uh, 2019. Okay. Um, so I make a, a motion to appoint, is it Thomas Murphy? Murtha. That's right. Murtha. Murtha. I second. Second. Appointment. Motion made by Commissioner D'Amelio, seconded by Commissioner Holmes for Thomas. I give that second of Mr. Dr. Hart. He's on the police committee as well. Okay. Dr. Hart. That's Thomas Murtha, correct? This is a. That's correct. Correct. Okay. Please call. Are there any other. Uh... No, that's it. We only have the one vacancy. Oh, but no, no other nominations. Okay. No, no others. Okay. Okay. Mr. Berman, would you please call the roll on the appointment for Thomas Murtha? Yes, Mr. D'Amelio. Thomas Murtha. Mr. Oliva. Thomas Murtha. Mr. McCluskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. So before we begin, uh, um, Jim Byrne, our solicitor is having a difficult time getting in. Dave, could you send him the password? I think he needs that. I'll take care of that. Thank you. Thank you. He just texted me. Nice tie, Dave. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, commissioners, for that, by the way. Thank you and congratulations, Mr. Murtha, and your appointment to what's probably the best police department in Delaware County, if not the region. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Our third item of business is our township auditor update. Mr. Anderson, are you on there? I see your name. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Okay. 
I reviewed the warrants and expenditures for this meeting. I found no irregularities and all my questions have been answered to my satisfaction. Great, thank you. Any questions for our auditor? None. Great. Next item of business is our citizens forum, which is, we have some registered speakers. Obviously we don't have anybody in the audience. There were several emails that came in to the township manager at the address that we provide for everybody. Um, there were numerous compliments to our police department for yesterday and compliments to the township for one allowing the protest and many compliments for the young people that put it on. So uh, thank you to all those people that took the time to write nice things about our police officers, especially in today's age, it's great to hear and it's great to see the professionalism that we exhibited yesterday there. I had a letter, there's a letter from Mr. Eric Horst has to do with the internal order police, which we are going to skip over. Um, that's, that's an organization that's comprised of members and we'll let their members uh, deal with that controversy. It's not something we will comment on. Um, next communication was from Megan Sack and she's a young lady in the township and she's asking, what are we doing to promote minority owned businesses in our community? And then her second question was, she's interested in how you organize protests and if there's a permit process to do that. So uh, what we're doing, we, we encourage economic development through our Hanford Partnership for Economic Development. Uh, we probably should focus a little bit more on recruiting minority businesses as well, but we're focused on recruiting businesses period to Hanford Township. Uh, we, we will get, I'll ask, uh, Mr. McCluskey, who's on the economic, he's the liaison to the board, the economic board to talk to them about at their next meeting about maybe some type of outreach program for economic development, specifically for minority businesses. Um, we, we do have a fair amount. If you um, look at some of the very owners of businesses around town, we have many different ethnicities. So I think we're in pretty good shape, but um, I think she's referring specifically to African-American business owners. Uh, but if you look at our population, we have many nationalities represented across the board in our economic development window here. And as far as organizing the protest, Chief, I guess there is a process for obtaining permits. It's a very, it's a very easy process, Commissioner. You can apply for it online and uh, somebody will contact the person who applies for it and work out the details. Great, thank you very much. The next communication was from uh, Mr. Anthony Morinelli about, he had sent all the commissioners a short film that he had taken down on Caracon in the park down there about Indian Rock there. And he's asking us to show that as a presentation in our meeting, which we can't do under this format. Um, it's probably more appropriate that if he, if he gets it, we could actually maybe put it on our YouTube channel for our residents to see. So we'll ask our IT department township manager to take a look and see if that's possible. Next item was from a uh, member from Jerry, the eighth ward, about the maintenance and lawn care at the Brookline school. Uh, Dr. Hart answered her, uh, but she did request that it be read at the public forum, had to do with lawn cutting and maintenance of the school. And uh, it was suspended while we people were working to remove the oil tank there. So now that that process is removed and the dirt is gonna be put back in, uh, maintenance and lawn care will, will now resume. The last item of communications was from Marie Ochigalano, Ochilo Grasso, concerning the flags at our township building, uh, specifically the thin blue line flag that represents the police memorial. Um, she, you know, obviously it can be construed in different ways. And I'm going to ask Chief Fayol to just give a very brief explanation as to why that flag is flying at our police station. It's a township the, building, but it's also our police station. The, the flag, the flag represents the twenty over twenty two thousand police officers, not including this year, that have been killed in the line of duty. It's a, a, strictly a memorial flag in their honor. Uh, we've been flying that for over fifteen years. Thank you, Chief. There are all the registered comments that I think I've received. Dave, did I miss any? Did you know? I had no others. Okay, great. So the next item on our agenda is our township manager update. That's Mr. Berman, David. Thank you.
With everything that's going on, I thought I'd review uh, first the COVID-19 statistics uh, as of today, June 8th. The Pennsylvania Department of Health reports approximately 76,000 positive cases of COVID-19 in Pennsylvania and approximately 6,000 deaths in the state. Through Chester County Health Department, Delaware County reports 6,754 cases of COVID-19 and 651 deaths in Delaware County. For Haverford Township specifically, we're reporting 660 positive cases of COVID-19 and 54 deaths. As you know, this past Friday, Delaware County moved into the yellow phase of Governor Wolf's plan for reopening Pennsylvania. D during the yellow phase, the township building lobby will remain open by appointment only. Please visit our website for additional information or dial 610-446-1000 between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday for personal attention. Public Works has returned to normal operations. Uh, brush collection resumed today. And as I mentioned last month, we're collecting only untreated wood products such as sticks, branches, brush, and wood chips. Also, as announced through social media and constant contact, our supplier requires brush to be delivered free of bags, twine, and debris. No grass, no railroad ties, no dirt, no soil, no leaves, no twine, no bags. The easiest and best way to prepare your brush is to pack it loosely in your trash cans or other containers with a weight limit of about 40 pounds per container. The township's no contact drop off shredding event will take place on Saturday, July 11th from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. here at the township building. Enter from Darby Road and exit onto Manoa Road. During the event, we'll ask you to remain in your vehicle. Simply place all of your shredding materials in the trunk of your vehicle and we will quickly remove it and place it into the shredding equipment for you to see. Our goal is to move as quickly as possible and maintain social distance. Unemployment. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that unemployment rate for Haverford Township skyrocketed in April. It was 4% in March and in April it was over 11%. So that means about 3,000 residents of Haverford Township were unemployed during the month of April. And that's out of a total, total labor force of about 27,000 residents. So to help serve the needs of the community, over 150 residents have already donated non-perishable food items to our non-contact food collection events that we're holding at the CREC. These events are taking place every Wednesday, again at the CREC, from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., and again from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And I want to especially thank Kirsten Taylor and Jesse Hart of our Parks and Rec Department for leading the effort to support the food banks right here in Haverford Township. Also, the blood drive. Last month, we hosted a very successful two-day blood drive at the CREC. Both days were completely full. Because the CREC provides an ideal spot to host blood drives while also allowing enough space for social distance, we have scheduled another blood drive for Tuesday, June 16th from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. That blood drive is already filling up fast, so please visit www.redcrossblood.org to schedule your appointment. And in this case, I really want to thank Eileen Matola of our Parks and Rec Department and Chief of Emergency Medical Services, Jim McCanns, for leading this effort for the blood drives. In the yellow phase, restaurants are now permitted to engage in outdoor dining. With input from the Haverford Partnership for Economic Development, the township continues to be as business friendly as possible during Governor Wolf's plan for reopening. We're working to maximize available space for outdoor dining and expedite permit applications to help restore the economic vitality and the quality of life here in the township. And we'll continue to work with business owners to help in any way that we can during this recovery. We realize that we're all in this together. Uh, taxes, a, a brief note. As you know, the township previously extended the discount period for the payment of real estate taxes to May 31st. 
And so now we're in the face period, which the board has already extended to August 31st. Therefore, the face amount is currently due. It's very important. Citizens Bank is no longer accepting tax payment at their branches. To ensure proper credit, please mail your payments directly to the Finance Department here at the Township Building, 1014 Darby Road, Havertown, PA, 19083. If you need a stamped receipt, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope. And if you have any questions, please feel free to, feel free to call the Finance Department at 610-446-1000, extension 2242 or 2240. And finally, uh, next month's meeting. We know that gatherings and events such as the Board of Commissioners meetings are limited to a maximum of 25 people in the yellow phase. With nine commissioners and some township staff, there's gonna be very little room for the public to attend. But with all of that said, we are working on a plan to bring the commissioners back together here beginning in July, while still respecting the need for social distance. I'll have more information on that in the coming weeks. And that's all I have for this evening, Mr. Wexler. Thank you, Dave. Great report. Dave, I have, a, I have a question, or maybe Dan would be better. As far as the brush, um, what about weeds? It's not, um, we don't mention it one way or the other. For some reason, I don't know why, uh, Commissioner, the um, weeds are acceptable, uh, grass clippings are not. Um, I've never got a true answer from them why the difference is between the two of them, but um, everybody that I've spoken to today, that's what I'm telling them, that the grass clippings are a no and, and weeds they can put in with the brush. Okay, thanks. Hey, um, hey Dave. Uh, Mr. President, can I ask you have a question about um, the pools? Uh, the, the, I don't know how many community pools that we have in the township. Is that something uh, waiting for green green phase, or do you have any sense for? It's it's my understanding that pools are private, and uh, and and uh, I guess club pools, those private clubs are being permitted to open in the yellow phase, but there are some restrictions. I don't happen to have that information here with me today, but I believe they are permitted to open in the yellow phase. As of, so as of last Friday? That's my understanding. Uh, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Chief Viola may have a little bit more information on that if he's still here. The, the pools are allowed to open with 50% capacity and there's a restriction of how many people are allowed to water also, and that's 50%. So it's up to the individual uh, pool or the private enterprise to uh, come up the correct uh, uh, number of people are allowed in the, uh, in the establishment at the same time. We only have one pool in the township and that is Hilltop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I thought, Hilltop, okay. And Caracon. And Caracon, yeah, Caracon. Oh, Caracon, I'm sorry, I completely forgot. But, but I there. heard that uh, Hill, or, or uh, that Hill, Hill, that Hilltop will uh, be, be, be closed for uh, the season. Well, that's what I heard, so. The season, oh, Connor? Yeah, yeah. Really? Close, but Caracon is, is opening or going to open? Yes, Caracon is going to open with a modified system. They're arranging that. Their memberships were told. I think it's going to be in first week, first or second week of July, maybe. And they, okay. they're they doing things like putting up flags to let you know if they're at capacity and stuff like that. So they're, they're alerting their membership via separate letter to their memberships. Thank you. Um, Mr. Thank can I uh, just say something about Dave? Dave, I want to thank you for your, your hard work during this pandemic. I mean, you certainly had a difficult time and still do communicating with us and the residents. And quite frankly, I haven't had any complaints about the communication. So I think you did a great job during this and you're continuing to do a, a <coughs> So thank you. Thank you. You're here. In a great first year. Mr. President. Mr. Siegel. Yeah, two things uh, for Mr. Mariani. First, uh, if you could just explain under what circumstances they're not accepting items that are left out in brush, that would be helpful since I've received a couple of comments about it. And the other is I have received numerous uh, thank yous for the extraordinary work uh, Public Works did in removing trees from streets and areas. Uh, I, I've never received uh, more communication, all positive, for the job they've done. So I, I hope you can extend that to all the workers so that they know they're appreciated. 
Uh, yes, thank you, Commissioner. That was um, it was a pretty tough storm. We did have a lot of uh, a lot of trees down. I think total um, we had about between trees and large branches. We had about forty. We had 10 street closures involving Pico wires. So that took some time to get back to take care of them. We, I think we've gotten them all opened up today. Um, and we still have a couple of crews out there picking up, you know, loose brush on the street, you know, obviously not with brush pickup, but um, some of the larger pieces. But um, thank you very much for the, for the, um, for the words. And uh, as far as the, 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 the brush, I mean, basically what we're doing right now is we're just trying to, to comply with what the uh, contractor wants who takes our brush. Um, everybody knows that, you know, uh, Mondays pick up and we pick up, we pick up a lot of brush. And during this time that we had off, I had some communications with the people who take it and, you know, they were, their concerns were the bags, the twine and the wire that when they bundle it up. So coming up with a game plan was a little bit tough. We knew it was going to be tr a trial and error type thing. Um, we knew today was going to be, uh, a rough day for you know my staff at the office because we fielded a lot of phone calls about the brush and I asked the trash guys not to to tag it today because we wanted them to call the office and, and to get a, a true explanation from me and and my staff at the office to explain why their their brush wasn't picked up and then just refer them right to the website um, so it's going to take a good couple of weeks probably to get it you know out there but hopefully with what we did today and you know, in a couple of weeks, we'll get it squared away and have it all taken care of. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. Holmes. Mr. President, I asked uh, Mr. Berman, he had one last piece of his um, manager update that related to finance. So I asked if I could, uh, if I could deliver that update. It has to do with the um, refunding of our 2014 general obligation bonds. We've been talking about that the last couple of meetings, including we authorized this refunding back in March, but it was postponed as a consequence of COVID and a number of things. So let me uh, formally announce on May 19th, the township conducted a competitive sale of $8.7 million of general obligation bonds, represented a refunding of the existing 2014 issue. 10 competitive bids were received with the low bid submitted by Janie Montgomery Scott of Philadelphia. Refunding will save Haverford taxpayers approximately $2.0 million in total interest costs. The saving was calculated at 22.7% of the bond par value and is well in excess of the parameters contained in our recently adopted debt policy. The total interest cost will be 1.99% compared to the 347 percent total interest costs when the bonds were originally issued back in 2014. People should understand in 2014, 3.47 was a good all in total interest cost. The savings generated also uh, exceeded the 1.2 million in savings that was anticipated back in January when we originally started planning for the sale. As a refresher, the refunding was authorized at our March Board of Commissioner meeting and did not extend the length of borrowing, nor does it generate any new debt. This is simply a refinancing of existing debt. We were delayed several times due to the volatile market generated by the pandemic, but our financing team at PFM was, was able to identify an optimal time for us and the savings well exceeded our expectations. Special thanks to our bond counsel, Bill Richter of Reed Smith, who navigated the technical legalities on our behalf. Our formal closing is set for June the 24th. Uh, bravo to our um, finance director, Amy Cuthbertson, for her excellent uh, shepherding of this deal and uh, wanted to let everybody know how much money we saved in this free funding. Got it, Amy. Awesome. Any other comments before we move on? Our next item is the approval of minutes. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Miller. Go ahead. Sorry, I have to bring it up. I'd like to make a motion to approve the regular meeting of May 11th, 2020. Second. Second by Mr. Siegel. Any comments, additions, deletions, or changes that need to be made? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? 
You're muted. Yeah, you're muted. Sorry. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Next item is the approval of warrants, item number seven. Mr. President. Go ahead. Mr. President, I move we approve warrant number six of 2020, totaling two million seven hundred eighteen thousand seven hundred seventeen dollars and twenty nine cents, comprising the general and sewer fund payroll for May 14th of 2020 in the amount of six hundred twenty eight thousand six hundred thirteen dollars and thirty one cents. The general and sewer fund payroll for May 28th, 2020, in the amount of $690,300.49. The general fund disbursements, number, sorry, number six of 2020, in the amount of $1,185,446.16. Sewer fund disbursements, number six of 2020 in the amount of $123,179.89. The Community Development Block Grant Fund Disbursement Number 6 of 2020, in the amount of $41,672.17. Capital Project Fund Disbursement Number 6 of 2020, in the amount of $51,827.87 and a credit card statement ending May 27th, 2020, in the amount of $7,677.40. Second. Second by Mr. Oliva. Mr. Any President, questions? our Township Auditor has been through this. He has uh, any questions that uh, he has come up with have been uh, submitted to the Township and answered to his satisfaction. He recommends these be approved, as do I. Thank you. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. McCluskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Item number eight. Granting of an easement. First reading. Dr. Hart. Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Hall. Move we uh, adopt the first reading of ordinance number P16 of 2020, authorizing the township to enter into an easement agreement for portions of the property located on Old Westchester Pike Road for the use of for the use by Aqua Pennsylvania Inc. Second. Motion made and seconded by Mr. Oliva. Bill, where is this located? Old Westchester Pike Road. Dan, are you uh, up on this? And what's the use? What's the intended use? Dan's is going to give you an explanation momentarily. Yes, Aqua uh, approached us about four months ago about running a new water main from Old Worcester Pike all the way up to the property at, uh, at the Township Yard. Um, the original game plan was to go through the school district property, which obviously we own, but then through the woods and then into War Yard, but now they're just going to go directly up Westchester or Old Westchester Pike to Hilltop Road. Okay, that's no problem. Right. I'm surprised they need our approval. The utilities, the utilities need. They need the easement on the private property portion of it. I'm sorry. On the township owned property portion of it, they do need an easement. Okay, that's private property. Too. Okay. okay, so it's a 20 foot easement. 20 foot wide. Yeah, it's going to, it's basically going to go right up our driveway into where you are. Okay. Any other questions? I, I shouldn't be. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. McCluskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Item number nine, land development for the high school. Mr. President. Mr. Siegel. 
Motion to adopt resolution 2180-2020 approving the preliminary slash final land development plan for the school district of Haverford Township, Haverford High School for the property located at 200 Mill Road, Havertown, Haverford Township, Delaware County, and known as DC Folio 2207-0052100 has been submitted to further develop the existing school with a three-story 6700 27 square foot classroom addition, a one story, 8,468 square foot music room addition, and expansion of the existing parking lot. The subject property is zoned INS institutional and is located in the seventh ward. The plans were prepared by Gilmore and Associates Inc. Engineering and Consulting Services, Langhorne, Pennsylvania, dated January 17, 2020, last revised on March 26, 2020 subject to the recommendations of the planning commission second motion made and second any questions concerns yes um what's going to be the net effect on stormwater dra um, drainage um as you know that's sort of the top of the the stormwater drainage down to the lower eighth ward um is this a no net effect is it i Dr. Hart, I could answer that. The, the application has to, like any land development application, meet our ordinance. And what our ordinance does, uh, it's the one we adopted, the updated one about a decade ago, it requires what we call rate reduction for certain storms. So for the lower intensity storms, but more common storms, the, the, the rate of runoff from the site is actually reduced from where it is at the pre-development stage. That's an ordinance we adopted, it, most of the county adopted about four or five, about 10 years ago. So this application uh, will and has to meet that requirement. And they've already shown that for the most part, they've met it. Okay. And what about for the larger, you said for the lower one, I mean, it, it, we're getting- You don't have to do rate reduction for the larger storms. Uh, I believe it's once you get past a 10 year storm, it's still what we call one to one. The intensity and runoff before is the same as the intensity runoff afterwards. And so it wouldn't improve it for those? Not for the larger storms, not for the intense, not for the high intensity ones. It doesn't make it worse, but it doesn't make, but it doesn't improve upon it. Was there anything else they could have done? I, I you know, I know that there's more, we've expanded a parking lot. So there's more, I know, and it, the, so there's more impervious surface I do have a green roof, but I'm just wondering if there were other things that could have been done. Well, I mean, you could always just, I mean, I hate to generalize, you always do something there. Our, our, our task is to make sure they meet the ordinance, the ordinance that we've adopted. To go above and beyond it is, is, is a little bit past what, what we're allowed to ask them to do. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown, a little bit sensitive to the drainage on the property too. Just uh, some of the board remembers some of the high intensity storms. There was some some damage to the school, so we're a little bit sensitive to make sure there's what we call positive drainage away from the buildings. A little bit of a different issue, Dr. Hart, related to the runoff, but a little different. Hey, Mr. Holmes, you had a question. Yeah, I was just going to ask Dave to explain. In the resolution itself, there's a waiver. Uh, the board of commissioners is granting a waiver to the. Um, school district from the general laws of the township, in particular dealing with the two-year storm rate and the one-year storm rate. Can you explain why that waiver was given, Dave? That waiver is not, that waiver is not to be granted. Um, that should have been pulled off there. Well, then let's pull it off. Are there, I've got A through H. Are there any other waivers here that need to come off? No, not that, not that I'm aware of, Larry. Yeah, that should, that's, that's not applicable. And frankly, I think they've already just about addressed it the requirement from the two to the one. So yes, we do not, you do not need to grant that waiver. Okay, uh, who moved this? Dan Siegel? Yes. Yeah, yes. Dan, uh, Mr. Commissioner Siegel, do you accept a change to the resolution that you, uh, that you proposed uh, that deletes uh, waiver letter H in the resolution? Yes. And who seconded it? Yes. Connor, do you, do you yep. accept that change? Yes. Dave, do you have the resolution in front of you? 
Dave, but I'm sorry, hold Mr. Pinotti. No, hold on for one second. I got the, I've, I've got the first part of it. Let me go back all the way to back to get the rest of it. So it's the second page. Understood. The last item. One. Uh, Understood. Yep. Um, have we waived in section E the minimum pipe diameter of 15 inches or a cross sectional area of 178 square inches for the storm drains associated with the uh, new work? Yes. Yes, we're okay with that waiver. Is that okay? Is that is that going to cause any kind of capacity issue in the storms we've seen? No, no. That the our land develop our ordinance requires a minimum of 15 inches. We impose that upon ourselves. Also, uh, it's more of a maintenance issue. These pipes are smaller. They're not conveyance. What we call conveyance pipes. They're just small collection pipes. So we're okay with waving that down to, to less than 15 inches. And what was it waved down to? Oh, I, I don't remember, Commissioner Holmes. I think they're putting in six and eight inch pipes for some, like roof leader drains to pick up some of the stuff coming off the roof. I don't remember exactly what size it went down to. It won't make a difference. Uh, it, 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 it Not a capacity issue. Correct. It's okay. uh, that's all I have, Mr. President. No other questions? Okay. Any other questions? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. McCloskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Holmes. No. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Item 10. Mr. D'Amelio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 2181-2020, authorizing the submission of a DUI grant application and further authorizing the township manager to sign on its behalf. Second. Second by Mr. Oliva. This is the normal course of business that we have to do with the state. Any other questions on this? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. McCluskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Item 11, Dr. Hart, lease agreement with the Manoa Fire Company. A uh, motion to approve a lease agreement by and between the Manoa Fire Company landlord and the Township of Haverford tenant to locate ambulance and its crew, which will operate within the township. The annual rent shall be fifteen thousand dollars. Motion made. Second. 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 And I do have a question about this. Um, what is this? Is an increase in rent from what we paid before? No, I believe it's the same rate that we've been paying uh, over the years. It's a it's a new location. And for the other um, ambulance at Haverford College, do we, we do we pay rent there? I I don't think, don't I don't think, think we so. pay rent there, uh, Doctor Hart. No, I don't I don't think so either. That's very generous of the college. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I, I have to disclose, I am a member of the Manoa Fire Company. I did discuss it with our solicitor. I am not on the board of trustees and just simply a fireman. So that it's of the opinion that Mr. Byrne said that I, I do not have to recuse myself as I have no fiduciary interest, no operating role at the fire company. I'm simply a fireman that responds to alarms. Um, so the township. So that's my disclosure. Um, Mr. Chairman, may I ask Jim Byrne? Yeah, and I, I agree with that. I, I mean, I think that, you know, under the ethics law, you should definitely identify if there's any type of conflict um, that, is, that extends beyond what a normal person or, or a normal individual would have. And then step two is, you know, would that conflict uh, cause you to not be able to uh, act fairly in this matter. And from talking with um, 
Mr. Uh, Wexler, you know, I, I understand it. that is not the case. He, he feels that he can fairly vote. He's, a, he's now, um, uh, you know, um, identified what could be thought of as a potential conflict. Um, really, it becomes a matter that it's just something that just about every other individual in the community that would like to be a firefighter or wants to be a firefighter could do so. Without the administrative position, I think he's okay. So, I, Mr. Chairman, um, um, Jim, you know, uh, as you know, I'm the president of Manoa Fire Company. Uh, we have voted to uh, authorize funding for all the five fire companies. Uh, and also we voted for, um, when it was at the other fire company, we voted um, for the same kind of lease. So do you want me to uh, recuse myself? Yeah, I think if you're the president of the company, I think that the standard becomes a little higher. I think the bar becomes a little higher. And I think that in that case, since you're the president of the company, um, then I think, yes, I would. that would be my recommendation. <laughs> We are very fortunate to have a uh, ethical scholar on our uh, board and, and maybe I could ask him to chime in, but I think that once you get into the officer or uh, supervisor, supervisory level like that, I think it's it's better safe than sorry. Then I will do so, thank you. Any other comments on the lease? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. I accuse myself. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. McCluskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Quinn. Yes. Dr. Hart. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Any new business? Uh, Mr. President, you're leaving. Uh, could we get an explanation from uh, the rec department on uh, what we're what uh, we're using? Because uh, I'm getting a lot. The, the reason I'm I'm asking or I'm bringing this up is that we're getting a lot of um, people who are uh, wanting to. Uh, I know Hilltop Baseball is talking about opening up, and um, you know in a in a uh, restricted manner, uh, as well as, um, you know, what, what criteria do we use to get, you know, where we are right now? Who, you know, did the CDC, are we following what guidelines to, to um, you know, to have our, you know, baseball fields close, all those things? I, I think Mr. Barman has the answers to all those questions. Okay. Yeah, we have Mr. Uh, Barrett if we need him, but, um, we looked at it together uh, with, with senior township staff, and we looked at uh, a, a variety of the facilities, and we relied on a variety of guidance. And so, um, as an example, uh, tennis courts. We, uh, we, um, we left uh, the tennis courts open uh, based on guidance from uh, the U.S. Tennis Association. There's clear guidelines for playing tennis safely during the pandemic and those same guidelines would apply to pickleball courts. Uh, skate place, uh, uh, skate park at Mary Place, that's open with restrictions um, because the Pennsylvania Recreation and Park Society indicates that there's a low risk of contact. Uh, their regulations or their guidelines would say 25 people per facility and our facility is a little smaller and so we've limited the occupancy to 15 people per uh, uh, in the skate park at one time. Trails have been open the entire uh, uh, time. Uh, playground equipment is closed largely because the Pennsylvania Recreation and Park Society indicates, indicates that playgrounds may be used, but only under supervised childcare and summer programs following CDC guidelines, which would include ensuring proper hygiene and cleaning and sanitizing of equipment. Um, we, we don't have the ability to do that for all of the parks throughout the township, and that's why we are recommending it and have uh, left the playground equipment closed. Basketball courts are also closed based on the fact that um, we recognize that basketball has frequent physical contact. Um, organized games are not permitted. 
and uh, perhaps you could go out and play with your family, but we all know that that would uh, uh, ultimately lead to uh, lots of people gathering at the basketball courts. We all want to get out and play, um, and we really feel that uh, that would be uh, inappropriate at this point uh, during the yellow phase of the pandemic. Playing fields, uh, they're closed as well. Uh, Pennsylvania Recreation and Park Society suggests um, that organized team sports are not permitted in the yellow phase. Um, they do suggest that perhaps household members uh, could go out and play, uh, throw the ball around and throw Frisbee, for example. But our experience tells us that allowing this would almost certainly lead to an immediately de immediate demand for those fields to be open to organized sports. And that's what we're trying to avoid, at least now in the yellow phase. I will say uh, we have plans as we move forward into the green phase to reopen the facilities and uh, we'll have signage that promotes social distancing and appropriate hygiene, et cetera. Uh, so that's the, that's the background of why uh, we uh, took the actions that we have and the reliance, uh, the guidelines that we relied upon for doing that. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. Thank you for the explanation. Any other new business? Other business, Commissioner D'Amelio. Thank you, Mr. President. I first want to thank the Westgate Hill Civic Association uh, for <clears throat> joining me in uh, last, I think it was Wednesday that we had a, uh, a vigil, candlelight vigil outside everyone's home um, to uh, honor George Floyd. Um, I can't thank them enough for their participation and for the residents that came outside their house. Um, I also want to thank um, the police for yesterday and the protesters. It was such a beautiful um, uh, event, really, a peaceful event, one that which I think is a model for probably the country on how the police and the community come together. And, and uh, I think that's a testament to the leadership that's on here now with John and uh, Joe, uh, our chief and deputy chief on how to handle a situation like that. If you notice, uh, our police did not, there wasn't an overabundance of police. They're, they didn't wear riot gear. They respected the community and I think that they were respected. And, uh, and they were also thanked. If you listen to the speeches in the end, um, they were really thanked for uh, protecting uh, the protesters there. So a uh, great job by everyone and great job to the community, to the students who organized that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Later. Okay, I'd like to um, a big, uh, I guess, shout out to the, um, the graduating class of 2020. Um, this, is, this is a difficult um, year uh, for everyone. And uh, anybody who knows a graduate uh, this year, um, we all remember the experience of of, uh, of graduating and uh, and these uh, kids have been has been taken away from them. Um, so for all of those those um, kids who are graduating, um, congratulations and um, I hope I hope it goes better uh, in in college. So um, and uh, again. I'd like to touch on the protest um, the other day and, and the handling of the protest, as well as the protesters and how they handled themselves. Um, it was a very peaceful protest, um, and uh, we we were able to um, uh, everybody was able to, to to speak their mind, and um, everybody really respected one another, as well as the police respected. Um, uh, everyone and, and everyone in respect of the police. So we, we didn't have any issues and uh, that's that's great to see. It's it's the way Hepperford Township is always been. And I have nothing for, further. Thank you, Commissioner Siegel. Or McCluskey. Okay. Commissioner McCluskey, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so Black Lives Matter. Um, I was glad we all could participate in the protest yesterday and I think the last couple of weeks in this country have, um, and watching the video of George Floyd's death has been traumatizing, I know for me, but I also recognize that uh, in no way as a Caucasian male um, can I possibly understand the impact that that has had 
on African Americans or the experience that African Americans have had uh, in this country. Um, and I've spent a lot of time trying to listen and learn. Uh, and one, one, one aspect that comes up, comes up time and time again, and I think was reiterated a couple different times at the protest yesterday, and I think it's important to reiterate at, at, in public is that it's, it's, it's not okay for um, all of us I believe everybody on this call and everybody uh, involved is is well intentioned and wants to be a good person. And it's not okay for us to just say, I am not racist. Uh, we have to be actively, loudly, um, in all times, anti-racism. Um, and that, you know, that, that requires a lot of work and it requires uh, some uncomfortable conversations and it requires, you know, for us to get you know, comfortable in the uncomfortable. And I'm hopeful that um, over the next weeks and months, uh, us in the township and uh, with our police force, we're, we're, we've expressed a willingness to be open to conversations with our residents. And it's gonna take us all um, being comfortable with uncomfortable conversations. And, and part of it is, you know, in, in a 12 step program, part of it is you, the first step is always you, you acknowledge, uh, you, you admit, you have a problem. So, you know, part of what we, we all have to realize is that, there, you know, there's racism in Havertown and it doesn't make us unique in Pennsylvania. It doesn't make us unique in America, but it exists. And, and you know, that's how you address the problem is by acknowledging the problem and saying it out loud. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it's, it's not calling anybody, you know, that was, it, in this meeting or anything like that races, but it, but to, to deny that it exists in our town, I think is, is naive. And we all, cause we all know it does casually or whatever. Um, so I, I am publicly and I, I hope everyone, I know everyone on this call was at the, at the protest yesterday. Um, and I know chief Viola has been, uh, terrific in meeting with the, the people who organized the protest and his willingness to meet. Um, but I think it's going to take, take us all, you know, going a step farther. And, um, you know, I, I, I personally, you know, the, the video of, of that man's death and the, the over eight minutes of watching it is painful to watch and it, it's, it's emotional. And I think, um, you know, we're all going to get at some point, people will retreat to, to various sides. It's, it's not a, it's not a side thing, right? It's, you know, a, a human being, if you watch that video, that, that has to be your first reaction. And we, we, we're going to get caught up in arguments down the road and we have to, you know, I think we always got to just go back to that video. And that's basic core. We all saw what the video was. We all saw a man murdered and that, that can't, can't ever be okay. It can't ever be okay. And, um, you know, it, if we get away, stray away from that, just go back to that point and, and we can try to make this um, a better community. Um, you know, and I, and I, I, I'm, Yesterday, for the first time in a couple of weeks, I was encouraged because our community, I think, um, spread messages of love and of action and of moving forward, and we all participated, and I think that was important. Um, so again, I just want to thank the, the high schoolers that put it together and reiterate that um, Black lives do, in fact, matter. Um, Anyway, uh, on to business in terms of the township. I know I'm, I've gotten a lot of questions about moving to yellow. We have a lot of businesses in town. Um, they've gone through these last couple months just as we all have and the businesses need our support. I'd encourage you all to uh, shop and dine and eat out uh, locally. Um, as Mr. Berman said, we'll hopefully move to green here soon and we'll have plans for that. Uh, so please be patient with us. I think in terms of uh, this disease, we can't necessarily let up. We have to continue to, to use logic and reason to be socially distant uh, and try to do the best we can to stop sp the spread of that disease as we all know it's still here. Um, and we as a township wanna support everybody. We all, trust me, <laughs> I wanna get out of my house as much as everybody else, um, but we have to be smart about it. Uh, so we're, we hope to work with you. Um, in the third ward, I, I believe Commissioner Lewis will probably discuss uh, an update regarding the Ardmore Avenue Bridge. They are, they do continue to work on it um, and he'll provide an update. Uh, and that's all I have for today. Thanks. Thank you. Commissioner Single. Thank you, Mr. President. When we next meet, it will be after the July 4th holiday. 
And it's probably in timing uh, particularly relevant because many of our celebrations are likely to be muted because of the pandemic. But July 4th is a time to celebrate the ideals of our country, uh, none more valuable than the right of free speech. Yesterday was an extraordinary day in the township and I've been communicating with the president of the school board and the superintendent that it was for me probably in terms of my relationship with the schools and having two sons who graduated from them, the day I was most proud of our students, um, where they stood up for the ideals of our country, uh, for the right to free speech, um, and for the values of our constitution. I've talked about for years the need for our community to confront racism, bigotry, et cetera. And it's tragic that an event such as George Floyd's death is what has provoked a significant conversation, to say the least, that is changing our society. But in many ways, it's good that those conversations are now open, that people can talk about, the students talked about some of the difficulties they experienced on a daily basis as students. Um, we had a program last year about implicit bias from the Human Relations Commission that opened a lot of eyes, including mine. So when you are with your families as much as you can be on July 4th and whomever else you're with, uh, please remember the values that July 4th Independence Day stands for. Um, my favorite t-shirt says the Constitution. I read it for the articles. And that is an extraordinarily valuable document, never more so now um, in local and national affairs. Uh, so have a wonderful holiday, but remember uh, what the country stands for and what our uh, founding fathers envisioned, uh, nothing more so better than yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lewis. Yeah, I would just say, first off, well said by my colleagues with regard to their comments uh, about racism and the protest yesterday. I was extremely proud of our community and the way uh, we honored uh, George uh, Floyd uh, and his tragic death, murder. Um, so uh, appreciate all the comments and I agree that always room for improvement and areas to work on. So um, with regard to the Arbor Avenue Bridge, just want to give you a quick update on that. Um, due to COVID related circumstances, um, they actually, as you might imagine or guess, they halted construction for about, I don't know, probably eight, eight nine weeks, and then um, started up again with a scaled back crew, um, you know, trying to maintain the social distancing and uh, unfortunately they were scheduled to close the scepter rail line last weekend actually turned the power off uh, pico was going to do that uh, so they could actually start putting the beams across uh, the rail line but unfortunately uh, pico um, withdrew their approval um, of turning the power off because they were obviously working to try to restore power <laughs> in so many parts of the township so uh, that's going to further delay the project. So we're looking at a, a sometime in the early fall is what we're hearing from PennDOT in terms of a, a reopening of the bridge, which is uh, unfortunate. Um, uh, well, but COVID, we're obviously we're not having the it's not having the traffic impact that that uh, would have otherwise. But probably the only only positive of COVID I can think of. Um, but. Anyway, um, so that's that's the update on Ordmore, and uh, that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, six word, Mr. Holmes. Mr. President, thank you. Um, two extraordinary things happened this week. Uh, one earlier in the week, Tuesday, uh, we had a primary election, a primary election in the middle of uh, unprecedented times, the pandemic, uh, the new mail-in voting. Um, and I wanted to thank the township. I wanted to thank Dave Berman. Uh, in particular for his efforts to assist both political parties um, to consolidate uh, our, our polling places. 
um, and to make it easier that day for people to do singularly the most important thing they can do as citizens. Um, I watched people who, because of you know various things that went wrong at the county level, did not get ballots despite having uh, asked for them and, and sent in the applications. These folks were folks who were definitely vulnerable to COVID and yet were willing to come out. Um, to come out and, and cast a provisional vote because of how important it is. And it was just a reminder to all of us um, that it is one of the most important things we can do as Americans. The other thing we can do as Americans is we can do what we did yesterday, which is to peacefully protest and to make our points and our, and our voice be heard and our points be known. And there was just a moment yesterday, what Commissioner uh, McCluskey said earlier about the difficulty of really putting yourself in the shoes of somebody who's so different. I'll, I'll never know what it is to be looked at uh, twice, uh, you know, in a store. I don't know. No one's ever going to see me dressed in a suit and ask what I'm trying to prove. Um, but there was a moment yesterday when the students read aloud the names of men and women and children um, who died uh, at the hands of police. And it happened on a beautiful Sunday in June when so many of us have heard names of people read aloud in graduation ceremonies. We've heard the names of people read aloud who are receiving awards or being honored for something they did. And it's always this time of year. And suddenly I realized just the scope of what of what we were talking about yesterday and about what that community has faced. And it just got me a little closer to maybe understanding and starting to feel the pain because suddenly I could conceptualize what happened and I could, I could appreciate the, the, the number of those victims and, and, and how many they were. And, and I could conceptualize it into a local graduation ceremony. And so for that reason, I really do appreciate how much effort, uh, those organizers, those students put into that protest. I appreciate the involvement of all of my colleagues here on the board and everybody's statements so far. Um, and I do promise that we'll do more than just attend a protest and feel good about our own feeling of, of not being racist, but instead to take affirmative action and to make sure that before before we start to worry about all lives matter and we first and foremost recognize that black lives matter. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Quinn. Thank, thanks, Bill. And um, I'm proud to serve on this board with all of uh, you. Uh, just the way our town came out, uh, we shine. And that's what makes me proud to serve with, with, or, or uh, with you, with uh, you guys. And, uh, Chief and Joe, the police are the best of the best in, in you know, the world. And when I got calls a week back about with everything that went on or like or went on, I just was saying, have faith in your police here because they're because they're the best. And that's all I have. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Dr. Hart. Yes, Bill. Um, when my wife Ann and I and our two young kids moved here 30 years ago. Uh, being in a racial minority, I think was, if your uh, family was not of Irish or Italian heritage. Uh, and as my grandparents were from Ireland and my wife's was from, uh, our family comes from Southern Italy, we were definitely in the majority with a little asterisk that we weren't born here. Um, over the 30 years, we're becoming a more diverse community, um, not overly diverse, but certainly, I mean, we've added to it. We have three African American children. I can say from our experience, and I think I can speak for my children, that they've had a, good, a very good experience. They've been accepted in um, town. But I, I can, I'm speaking as a white man. I don't know if my complexion was the same as theirs, what their experience would be. As everybody else said, uh, um, I was heartened by the participation of our community in the uh, protest yesterday, especially heartened by the um, leadership of the high school students. As someone who's going to have their fifth child graduate from Haverford High School on Thursday, 
I would give a big shout out to Mr. Donahue and all the great student uh, teachers in our Haverford system. Uh, they've done a wonderful job. I want to take a minute to read something um, from a comment by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, for those who are under 35, he was the LeBron James of uh, my day. Um, said, racism is like dust in the air. Even if you're choking on it, until the sun shines on it, you don't see it. And you see it everywhere. As long as we keep shining that white, we have a chance of cleaning it wherever it lands. But we have to stay vigilant because it's still in the air. And I think that's the, our calling. Uh, we need, we, as a board, need to shine a light on our actions. The police department needs to shine a light on their actions and the residents need to shine lights on both of us and on ourselves. And we have to look at our, how we interact with others. Um, so it, it's a, this, as Mr. Holmes said earlier, this is the beginning of a process. Uh, we need to stay on it. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Dr. Hunt. Thank you for that analogy. I think that's a, a very clear Thing that we can all see when you see the dust and everything. I even go back to when he was called Lou Alcindor. So I know it. Uh, it's heartening to know the protest yesterday awoke me. It's it's heartening to know that as I get into the twilight, I I was thought about those young guys. I'm I'm 50 years out of high school, and, and it's encouraging to see that these young people have the activism, the passion. I think it's the passion that carries them. Uh, they don't see limitations that age. I think that's great. And I think they work with us. Um, it forces us to see that. I think we want to work hard in our own way as a body that we are to, to become an inclusive community. And I think their passion shows us that we need more work to do because there is not inclusion. As Commissioner McCluskey pointed out, the problem and admitted openly, uh, you, can't, you can't heal and you can't self-sustain. So so thank you all for those words, uh, Kevin, Larry, Dr. Hart, everybody that talked about yesterday. And again, thank you to the young men and women that put on it, that organized that to make their friends and, and their counterparts and their generation aware of it. But in, in doing that for their generation, they made us more aware, I think, publicly, as, as everybody has stated. So I think going back to the pandemic, let's get green and let's not go back. Uh, let's when we get those and open those fields if we practice those and we do that i'd like to thank the recreation department i know they've been fielding a lot of calls we've all been fielding calls from the baseball people football people every every sport wants to get out there the parents want to organize i have no problem with kids going out and playing so when the parents get involved and we organize then it becomes a problem with the social distancing and trying to be in positions and stuff so i have no problem with doing that and hopefully we'll be there within a week or two Thank you for all, work, for all that storm work. And thank you again for resuming, even under the burden of all you're doing and with the storm management of picking back up and doing the, uh, the brush pickup. We'll get through that too. We'll, get, we'll, we'll all learn what we're supposed to do. So I thank everybody for their time. I thank everybody for your participation yesterday. Uh, I, I think it's, you know, our leadership. We have to lead by the hope that we, we did that demonstrate to those young people that we do care and that our actions going forward show that we care and we, we take action to, to do that. And that's all I have. I would entertain a motion for adjournment at this point. I move. Thank you one and all. Good in July. Thanks. 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 Thanks everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you all and to the public.